hello everyone and welcome back to another video so in this video we are talking about the five basic principles of tooth preparation the design of a preparation for a cast restoration and the execution of the design are governed by five principles these are preservation of tooth structure retention and resistance structural durability marginal integrity and preservation of periodontium a restoration must preserve the remaining tooth structure that is you need to remove only as much tooth that is required and whole surfaces of the tooth structure should not be sacrificed on the basis of the speed of the handpiece and one thing you need to be cautious about that there should be no pulp exposure Closure. but if due to any aerotrogenic factor the pulp get exposed so this is what a pulp exposure looks like during a round preparation here you can appreciate a red spot on the peg shaped lateral incisor that is to be replaced by a crown if we talk about the strategies that you can apply to avoid this kind of pulp exposure is so you can use a good handpiece and a new burr that can save you from pulpal exposure and you must inform the patient beforehand that the pulp might get exposed and you might be sent for an elective rct so this point sums up our preservation of the periodontium and now moving toward the second point that is retention and resistance. So retention, uh, talking about retention, what is retention? Retention actually prevents removal of restoration along the path of insertion or long axis of the tooth. In simple words, you can say the quality to resist the vertical forces that is forces that are acting away from the occlusal forces of displacement is retention. To understand what vertical forces mean is that, for example, if if you imagine a patient chewing a gum or an eating any sticky uh, food so you don't want the denture to come out because of the sticky nature so these are the forces that are acting away from the occlusal surfaces and this is what retention is called now that we have defined retention let's define resistance resistance actually prevents the dislodgement of the restoration by forces that are directed in apical horizontal or oblique direction and prevents any movement of restoration under the occlusal forces we study retention and resistance together because retention and resistance are interrelated and inseparable quantities so you can say as good as the retention the resistance would be good too that is they are directly proportional to one another because retention and resistance are directly proportional to one another we are going to study the same factors for both the qualities the essential element of retention is two opposing vertical forces of the same preparation. These surfaces may be the external surfaces such as buccal and lingual walls of a full coverage crown in extra coronal restoration and this kind of retention in an extra coronal restoration is called sleeve retention it will be clear if you understand this figure here in a an extra coronal restoration is shown and in b you can see the arrows pointing downward remember when we defined retention we said its resistance against the vertical forces that is away from the occlusal surfaces so it is using an opposing external surface for retention and this is called sleeve retention we have talked about the extra coronal now let's talk about intracoronal restoration the opposing surfaces can be internal surface such as buccal and lingual walls of a proximal inlay so here again if you see in this figure a is showing an in a proximal occluso inlay which is an intracoronal restoration and in b you can see the arrow how it is pointing inside which shows that inlay uses an opposing internal surface for retention which is known as wedge retention here you can appreciate how arrows are pointing differently for an extra coronal restoration and an intra coronal restoration respectively. Now talking about the next quality that is taper. Taper is defined as the convergence of two opposite facing external walls of a crown prep. Now you have to take care that if you're talking about external walls so it will be convergence and if internal walls so it will be divergent. Now in this figure you can appreciate the divergent wall why divergent because these are the internal walls of the tooth and here you can see tapering of 10 degrees 15 degrees and 20 degrees now how much tapering is required so a range of 6 to 10 degrees is ideal but in schillingberg is written 6 degrees that is 3 degree on the buccal side and 3 degree on the lingual side so a tapered diamond burr is used for tapering and this is how a tapered diamond burr looks like Theoretically, the more nearly parallel the opposing walls of a preparation, the greater is the retention. The most retentive restoration would be the one with the parallel walls. Now, one thing you need to understand is that we are studying taper and all of this to gain resistance and retention. But too much tapering is not good as it will compromise the retention. 
Tapering must be kept minimum because of its adverse effects on retention. Like here in this graph, you can see as the taper is increasing, the retention decreases, which is depicted by the falling line of the graph. And also, the greater the surface area, more will be the retention. In simple words, preparation on large teeth are more retentive. As you can see in this figure, which simply says that a full preparation crown is more retentive on a molar as compared to a premolar because of the greater surface area of molar. Now, the next point, freedom of displacement. Retention is improved by geometrically limiting the number of pathways along which a restoration can be removed from the tooth preparation. Maximum retention is achieved when there is only one path. As you can see in this figure, A, a full veneer preparation with long parallel axial walls and grooves produce such retention that is by limiting a path of withdrawal, retention is improved. While on the opposite extreme, which is B, there is no retention because the restoration could be removed along an infinite number of paths. How to limit this displacement it, we can make some grooves. And a groove whose wall meet the axial wall at an oblique angle does not provide the necessary resistance. As you can see in this figure A, you can see how the walls of the groove are meeting the axial wall at an oblique angle which is not providing the necessary resistance. While in B, you can see the walls of a groove are perpendicular to direction of the force to sufficiently limit the freedom of displacement and provide adequate resistance as shown in B. The next factor for retention and resistance is length. The occlusal gingival length is an important factor in both retention and resistance. The longer preparations will have more surface area and therefore will be more retentive. Now in this figure, the length of walls of a restoration is A is much more than on the restoration walls which is shown in B, which is by the restoration on B cannot resist the tipping forces because of its shorter length. But if the preparation is on a smaller tooth, so it will of course have a shorter rotational radius of displacement and the incisal portion will resist the displacement as you can see in this figure A, a preparation on a tooth with a smaller diameter which is in A resists the pivoting movements better than a preparation of equal length in B because of the size of the teeth. In case you have not prepared the walls long enough for a large teeth, so you can improve it by placing grooves as shown in this figure that how resistance improved after adding grooves. The grooves can be appreciated in the figure B if you can see the two straight lines that are depicting a groove. Now the next point is the path of insertion which is an imaginary line along which the restoration will be placed onto or removed from the preparation. It is determined mentally by the dentist and it is of special importance because when preparing a fixed partial denture, the paths of all abutment preparation should be parallel. How to check the path of insertion is that it is viewed with one eye from a distance of about 30 cm and it is possible to side down the axial wall of a preparation with minimum taper. It can also be viewed from both the eyes open however it will create a binocular vision so it is not suggested. Now the path of insertion must be considered in two parts that is facio-lingually and mesiodistally. Talking about the facio-lingual dimension, in this image you can see A which is the ideal one. So the ideal path of insertion should be parallel to the long axis of the teeth. In B you can see the path is directed facially which is making the facial incisal angle very prominent so it will create aesthetic problems. While in C you can see the path is directed lingually so the facial surfaces intersect lingual surfaces creating a shorter prep and it may also enroach the pulp. So the ideal one is A which is parallel to the long axis of the teeth. Now in the mesiodistal inclination, the path should be parallel to the contact areas of the adjacent teeth as shown in this figure A which is ideal. Now in B, if the path is inclined mesially or distally, the restoration will be held up at the proximal contact area that is it will be locked out. Now comparing both facio-lingual and mesiodistal dimension, we said facio-lingual should be parallel to the long axis of the teeth while mesiodistal dimension should be parallel to the contact areas. This brings us to the end of this video. The other features will be discussed in part 2 and part 3. If you like this video, please hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel.